Yo, what's up? It's your boy again, and this story spans a 420. I'm wanting to say it was probably the either the my senior year or the year after senior year where I was taking a break before college, where it was 420, and we were in a, <laughs> in my area that I was living. We were in about 15 different counties in about four hours by my calculation. And we had all different kinds of shenanigans. So for the build-up here, let me tell you about the background here. We got characters from the past story times that we've done before. We have... Sorry, there, I had to look up their names. We had Walt, that was from uh, some of the story times, and Tommy Jarvis and me. So it's just us three, three amigos running deep in my old-ass shitty car. I don't remember the make and model. I want to say it was a Buick, but I'm not a guaranteeing. And uh, we would write on like, eventually at this car's point, at this point, we'd have like markers in my car and people could write on the ceiling and put like quotes from like music and shit on it. That's how little regard I had for this car. Either way, we had this big bag of the Mary Jane on 420. We all threw down, but I threw down a majority. So I pretty much had to say so of what we we're doing. Um, they were just down for the ride. So, I, uh, fucking tell them that we go in town where I lived, and, uh, we get, uh, some blunt wraps, and we get a bunch of joint papers and all that kind of, you know, stuff you would need. I had a lighter, but they made sure to buy an extra lighter just in case, you never know. Uh, I believe... I actually bought a pair of sunglasses, or I just recently had bought a pair because I, you know, trying to think ahead, driving towards the sun, get blinded, especially in 420. And then uh, uh, we have it where I'm in the front, and we have uh, Tommy Jarvis in the back, and Walt is driving passenger, a uh, driver passenger, you know, passenger front. And uh, we are started off in. Uh, you might want to get a fucking map of Morgan County, or not Morgan County, but a map of all the counties in Illinois, because we start off in Morgan County, but we we end up in a bunch of different ones. I have them listed here, but I'm, I can't really remember the exact train of events. For I can, but I don't remember exactly like which path I took, but I retraced most of my steps, and I have I actually traced the counties down of all these areas that, during this this little outing that me and the boys had here. So, yeah, if you uh, if you look at the thumbnail of this video, there's a, a county of or a map of Illinois separated by counties. So if you had something like that, it'd help you out a lot because I'm going to be talking about specific counties in Illinois um, because this is a pretty specific story. Uh, so yeah, we. Uh, I have, basically, I have uh, Tommy Jarvis as, like, the roller. He's the guy who's in the back sitting with all the weed. He's going to roll everything up. Um, we even got, like, a kind of like a, oh, if we get pulled over or something, we have a little, you know, way to get, you know, things minimized. Um, so, basically, we're just started off driving around. And uh, some of these events won't be in chronological order, but most of them will be, I'm pretty sure. Um... We're driving around, let's see, and we end up hitting, uh, yes, here we go. So, there's this road uh, on the corner, or on the corner, it's like, it's literally called the uh, County Line Road, and it rides on the county line of, if you're looking at the map, it runs in a county line of Morgan and McCoupin counties, and uh, there's a lot of back roads out there, that's the caveat, is I'm, we're riding only back roads on this 420, because we don't want to be fucked with by the police this is you know highly illegal even when it's legal highly illegal i'm not saying go out and drive when you're stoned don't do that i'm not saying do that i'm just saying we did it this time and this is just the story of that account and that's it <laughs> um and we were just getting hella baked out there and it's just kind of interesting because it's like i don't know how many counties or how many areas and states have a, a county line road where literally it's on the actual border between the counties and we ended up in McCoupin County from that uh, we also ended up, before we left Morgan County we're on this uh, road 
that like it's almost like a dark a dark fucking wooded like steep ass hill like it's a road but it's a big ass hill and it's got nothing but potholes and rocks so like when you go down you have to go real slow because you'll skid or you'll fucking hit a pothole and you'll pop your tire and you'll be in the middle of bfe it's not too too far out of the town range but it's just such a meaningless road i only went down it a very few times mostly on accident or by like just having to no choice you know um but this road sucks and i don't remember the name of it right now on top of my head um, but it, it's a terrible road um we were jamming all kinds of different music this whole time around too. We had like you know all kinds of 420 friendly music like Cypress Hill. We had Sublime. We had Slightly Stupid. We had you know Dazed and Confused soundtrack was something we were banging back in that day hardcore. We had some uh, Fish, Easy Star All Stars. They have a Radio Dread, which is like a you know a reggae version of a Radiohead album. It's fire. But anyway, talking about music, we had some Pink Floyd music, and uh, there was a. Uh, time and in Cass County if you're looking at the map Cass County is the county right above Morgan County that there was a dog in the middle of one of these country roads blocking the path and I don't think it was anyone it might have been like a farmer's dog or something it wasn't barking or anything it was just kind of sitting there in the middle of the road and there had been plenty of times other road trips before where there was dogs always in the road blocking things and usually they're barking at you and they're like just vicious and not really vicious just kind of in the way and i don't want to hit the dog you know <laughs> they're more just trying to keep their area safe basically but the song dogs from pink floyd when i jam it uh my friend rango and me uh he's not in this story necessarily but he is in essence uh would always uh think of that song because with d the incident would always happen and we were just jamming pink floyd and that song dogs on animals is a really good song and uh, yeah, this dog was just sitting there in the middle of the road, and um, we just kind of like just sit there. And I, I don't want to honk my horn to scare it, so I just kind of like open my door and kind of stick my body out. And eventually, it just kind of gets up, and it kind of like you know almost waddles away. Then it sits back down. And I'm like, well, goddamn it! And here I am, fucking passing this blunt back and forth. But, you know, actually, we had two blunts in rotation at all times. And when one got small, we already had another one fully gone because we had Tommy Jarvis in the back. So here I am trying to be like, you know, hey man, you like when I get out of the like road? It's like we were kind of having fun with it because it's like, yeah, fuck it. There's no Pete, nobody. You can't see anybody for a fucking mile around any vicinity. You know, just there's it's a farmland and woods, farmland and woods. That's all it is in this area. And uh, the dog kind of eventually came over to me, and uh, we started. I probably started petting the little feller. He's a good dog. He's a good dog. I can't remember what breed it was by any means. It was a black dog. That's all I know. It made me think of that Patrick Swayze movie or the truck driver called, called Black Dog. But uh, yeah, he's a black dog. We just petting them and I'm pretty sure uh, that, uh, freaking uh, Tommy Jarvis in the back took a break from rolling and everything and he kind of got out and pet, pet the dog real quick and I said get back in the car though I told him get back in the car dude because we gotta like you know don't want to see her too long and a dog was out of the way now so got him boom we zoomed out uh, and that shit was uh, <laughs> it was good though it was a good dog and it wasn't like flea ridden or anything it was probably like I said the farmer's dog or something that was out there but very nice dog um we were followed by a cop for a little bit at one point which is like dun 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 oh not good in green county which is you know pretty close to uh the mccoupin county pretty much really very close to the the uh the county line road incident um honestly it might have been in that same little stint it might have been right before it might have took a little swoop there if you're looking at the county map of illinois but uh we were followed for a little bit, and there was a there's a method. I told my friends there's this method that worked for me uh, four times now when I was smoking when I shouldn't have been uh, on the road with people in the car. Okay, so when you got a cop behind you and they could see if you know they're close enough to where they could see people and you know yeah, they could see who's in a car and what they're doing, you just start to headbang real heavy. You turn your music up real loud and you just headbang real heavy to give them the illusion that like you know. We don't, even if we are, you know, we probably know that we're getting followed by a cop or we don't know either way. We're so, we're so in a state of not worry that we're headbanging. So it gives the cops idea that we don't care if we get pulled over or, 
you know, we're all, I don't know, it throws them off. It might make them think, well, the hell, if they were high on something, would they all just in unison headbang? I feel like they're just some kids having fun, you know what I mean? Like, now, I feel like the weird thing to do would be all sit there stiff and nobody move at all. And like, you know what I mean? That is probably what gives them an alert, at least in my opinion, because this time it worked. And by golly, it worked. He followed us for a good chunk down these country roads, and I, uh, I did a smart smart, and I turned on to a, uh, a highway just real quick, and he turned onto the highway, but he turned the other direction. So we turned for a little bit, and we went to the very next country road, boom, right back on it. And he was out of visual anyway. He wasn't worried about us. I think he was just happened to be taking that country road to take a patrol area, you know what I mean? Like, we were no bother to him at all. He didn't even, like act like he was going to pull us over. I think my method worked though. He was behind us close, but that's only because we were close to the stop sign and you know, and that's when you implement the method and boy, howdy. And I was driving well, like I was stoned, but man, stone isn't like being drunk behind the wheel. I'm not trying to like advocate for being stoned behind the wheel, but it's way more like, I don't know, manageable. I don't know. It's, it's a person to person basis. You know, it's definitely a thing like that, but for me, it ain't nothing but a G thing, you know, it's, I'm not a danger to anybody, I'm not swerving, I'm not even speeding, I'm actually driving like, this, uh, maybe like five below the speed limit just to make sure, you know what I mean, we're chilling, we're chilling, okay, but anyway, enough lingering on that, so, uh, we went to a town, or by a town, and it's one of the grossest towns ever in the area, and uh, it, it's called Bath, Illinois, and it's one of the grossest towns in the area, ironically enough, and that's in Mason County, so if you're looking at the map here, Mason County is right above Cass County, so we're going a little bit more northern in this story. Disgusting, disgusting town, but came a dilemma. I, dumbass, did not account for how much gas I guess we'd be using. I think I had like a fourth of a tank or probably less, and uh, so we needed some gas, and someone in the car had to go to the bathroom. So, I can't remember which one it was. I wanted to say it was... I wanted to say it was, uh... The old, uh, jo Tommy Jarvis, but I'm not 100% sure. Um, but... We end up getting to this gas station that I believe's in Fulton County. Because I don't think there's a gas station in Bath. Bath's just a series of shitty-ass towns and, like, double-wides. And, like, it looks like pretty much every house is a meth-making house, which could be the case. I don't know. It's explosive city in that case. But we did not want to stick around very much. So in the middle of BFE, I needed to get my gas. It wasn't on light, wasn't on yet, but it was pretty close. So we end up in this fucking gas station in the middle of Fulton County. And, um, it is the dingiest fucking gas station, at least at the time it was. It's the most hickey, hickey ass son of a bitch. In fact, I go in there and there's this, like, guy, like, inside the store. I don't think he's a worker. And he's just, like, staring at me. And he looks like he kind of had a voice like this. And he's looking at me and giving me that look. And he's, like, talks. He's talking to the, uh, cashier year, but he's, like, standing a ways away from him, like... He's looking at something in a rack, but he's talking to the cashier like he's probably known him his whole fucking life. And he's like, yeah, I'm just sitting there and the crops are doing good. The crops are just look out there, they're doing good. And I'm just like, oh no, where are we? And then the guy behind the counter comes out and he's like, can I help you? And he just like fucking stares at me, like super like serious. And I got my slightly stupid shirt on actually at the time that's got a ca Captain the Captain Crunch lookalike, and he's like smoking a dube instead. It's like fucking I don't remember exactly what it says on it, but it's the dopest shirt ever. But I think he like instantly hated me because he knew I probably smelled like weed and looked like I don't know. I probably looked like a guy he, he would fucking hate. And I'm just like, yeah, just need to get a little gas. And, uh, and then by that time, Tommy Jarvis, uh, both of them actually came in. Uh, and uh, fucking Walt both came in and they were looking at the shelves. And one of them went to the bathroom, whichever one needed to. I was just kind of worried that he was going to like fucking give us some deliverance style shit. Because he looked like a deliverance style kind of motherfucker. But I ended up getting the gas. I ended up getting like fucking plenty of gas. Just to make sure we didn't have to do that shit again. Uh, which it, he'll find out actually kind of ends up failing anyway. And then we all saddle up in my car as both of them kind of stare at me. And then we leave. And then as soon as we leave, not soon as we leave, but like, you know, as we got the door and I get a good enough distance away, you can hear him, the, the other redneck guy, like, yeah, it's a weird pack there. Where that kid out there? And like talking shit pretty much about us the whole time. And I'm just like, I don't even want to worry about this. Get in the car. Let's go. So we got in the car and we fucking dipped. 
Uh, so we were on, <laughs> uh, on the outskirts of Sangamon County at one point near Springfield. Actually near, I'm pretty sure, Springfield itself in some place. I think it's probably like Rochester or that area maybe. Uh, small ass area. And uh, fucking my dumb ass had to go piss. It didn't have to go pee back then, but this is probably like a good hour between, you know, the four hour span is probably an hour between those two events. And yeah. I'm dumb, I guess. I have the bladder of a child. And I had to go piss, so here I am pissing in the middle of a fucking country road. This reminds me of the story, the fair story is I have, where I was pissing on the side of a fucking highway. I'm pissing on the side of a goddamn fucking country road with fucking these, uh, you know, cattails and fucking plants that are in, like, the, you know, gutterish, like, near the fence area of this farm that are, like, super ass tall, trying not to get my fucking shit bit by some mosquitoes or something. Oh, what a terrible, terrible experience, because I was like, I piss on pressure, and I'm not like a pressure pisser. Usually I need time to go to the bathroom, you know, kind of think it out a little bit, like, all right, man, this pee better come, you know. No, here I am, like, oh, gotta go, gotta go, I'm on the side of a fucking road, and who knows when the fucking car is going to come by. And, uh, yeah, I mean, it, it didn't happen, um, I don't think a car actually did come by at all. I think I just went, but it took fucking way too goddamn long, let me tell you. Um, the, one of the funniest stories, I don't know how I forgot this, or I didn't forget it, I just kind of passed it up. This was in, uh, Jersey County on the map, so we were far, for, that's probably the furthest south we went on this particular trip, because we were in Macoupin County, which sweeped, or, or swept around, a, I think, Jersey County there, and up to Greene County, um, and, uh, Let's see. Yeah, so here in Jersey County, I remember that it was like the movie In the Mouth of Madness. There was this farmer on a tractor, and we drove by him at least three times, the same farmer. And it wasn't like, you know, where he was facing a different direction. You know, it was like, you know, you would think you drive by him three times, he'd be facing, okay, one time he's going to be facing the back, his back will be to us, and two other times he'll be in front of us because, you know, we're coming from different, we're coming from you know, north-south or south-north or whatever the fuck direction we're going. No. Every time we drive by him, it's the same. He's smiling. He's driving. He's to the right of us on the side. We have, we, we let him go around or whatever or let him come by the side of us. He just waves at us. Friendly smile. Friendly wave. And I swear to God, each time this happened at the three or more encounters that we had with this guy, we just, same dude in the same area, the same experience. He drove by. He waved, smiled, drove by I mean he was a chill guy but it's the most creepy thing ever when every time you ex you experience this guy it's the same exact uh, encounter and everyone in the car had this really eerie feeling because I'm like did you guys have that same like deja vu vibe and they're like yeah dude this guy it's it was and it wasn't like he was following us the tractor's too slow to like follow us around or anything but dude it was super creepy <laughs> I uh yeah that was probably the creepiest thing in the whole entire thing he, like I said nice dude but oh my god like how the fuck did that even like what's the what's the what you know and around that same time actually Tommy Jarvis told us a story about a time I don't know he doesn't remember specifically where he was at in the country roads that he was at in the roadie with a bunch of other guys it was like him and four other dudes they were all packed into this uh, van and uh, apparently they came up to a farmer and when they were smoking and it was like the middle of nowhere and uh, they pulled over to the side of the road and like hey man you want to hit this blunt and the farmer came over and he toked the blunt a couple two three good times and waved him on is like thanks boys and like waved him on now whether that's true or not that's one thing but that sounds like something that might happen in the area that we live in uh, i tell you that shit is hilarious because seeing that farmer at least gave us that creepy ass farmer at least gave us a funny story from him that he remembered because of it and uh that's kind of so you know consolation prize of getting freaked out by fucking some sutter cane shit if you get the uh fucking reference there <laughs> All right, either way, though, the last story I have on this whole entire fantastical journey, at least that I can remember at this moment, is a time that we were, I think, in the outskirts of Greene County, maybe in part of Macoupin, maybe even part of Scott County there. It was somewhere in that little chunk, maybe even the remnants of Jersey, somewhere in that little bottom chunk there, but there was this weird-ass smell in the air, and it wasn't farm chemicals, because... Most people in the area know what the smell of like farm chemicals is, and plus the time, the time that this took place, it, that doesn't match. It didn't match up. 
it was just some weird smell. It smelled like closer to like, I don't know, this is going to sound cliche, I guess it is kind of a creepy thing in the end of it. Because it did smell kind of like death, like something died, but like, you know, there's nothing like, I don't know, we weren't going to walk out to find out what it was. And uh, we heard like a like a weird like bang sound, but like it was sounded like, you know, not like a gunfire, but more like a, like a thump, like a really weird like thunk. Like, like a thunk sound, if that makes any sense. Like, and it was like too, like, I remember we were driving, like I was driving and I'm getting a blunt past to me and I remember thunk and it's like to the like right of us and we're like, what the hell? Like it was something almost like a sh like a shunk, like something getting shot through like a, uh, like a marshmallow gun or something, you know, really weird. And then, uh, and then that smell occurred like before we heard that sound and it was like during, you know, during and after. And uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't know what the fuck that was all about. And like I said, that was in the I, somewhere in that Green County-ish range there. But it was uh, that was a I don't know doozy. <laughs> but yeah, dude, that journey was great. We ended up getting back after like the fucking four hours, and we just smoked and blunts and blunts and blunts. And there was like fucking uh, fucking so many blunt roaches that we ended up smoking like I think. <laughs> at least like a blunt with the fucking blunt roaches i mean this was a time where like we were st i mean most people don't even fuck with that but we we did at that time we did we fucking opened we ended up fucking open up all the blunt roaches some of them are kind of big because we just had the luxury of sorry my damn cat fell down after being asleep on the window ledge <laughs> but either way yeah we had enough fucking like we had some of those roaches were pretty big because we were just quitting them pretty fast because we just had fresh fucking blunts to start again fresh anyway so we fucking had like at least two blunts probably worth now I think about it of just like blunt roaches that we'd split open and kept the weed from and combined them and all. but that's my tale so you guys have a good one and this has been Amethyst Pudding and stay on the channel we got plenty more content coming up I'm gonna stream here soon not today but here soon in the future this week and uh you gotta look out for that but either way y'all have a good one deuces Hey there, boo-boo. Remember to like and subscribe and hit the notification bell for the pick and a basket.